So over the past few months, I've been building out a pretty robust contact list system in Notion. Thought I'd spend a few minutes explaining why I've done that and really some of the things I've added over the last few months have made it pretty awesome. So I have my main contact list in a program called Contacts Plus. You can see a screenshot here. Uh, has like 4,500 contacts in it. Um, syncs my two Google accounts together, does all that kind of stuff. I like to have any contact I get a hold of to uh, be in my phone. So if they call, you know, I can know what's going on. I started by taking this list and exporting it and then dumping it into Notion and then cleaning out tons of them. So again, I had 4,500 or so in Contacts Plus. Um, I've got 1,045 in Notion right now. Um, I suspect when I'm done, I'll end up around 1,500. It should be about right. My first concern was that Notion and my main contact list at Contacts Plus won't sync together. And maybe they will after the API, but the more I get into it, the more I don't think I want them to sync together. I think they're sort of two different purposes. And I hate having you know, multiple sources of truth for any info, and that's kind of what I'll lead to here. But Contacts Plus, I really just want their email and phone number in there, so it shows up on my phone. Here in Notion, uh, the contact info is much, much more rich, and it's a smaller list. Again, it's 1,000 people, it'll be 1,500 people later, but that's far less than the 4,500 that I just want. Give me the phone number, make sure it's in there, so if they call, I know who it is, that kind of thing. So I think it'll work out all right. So I started this by just, you can import a CSV file to start a database, and so I did that, and imported this, it had you know, 25 columns and 4,500 rows, it was a mess. So I cleaned out a bunch of the redundant columns, um, removed a bunch of the people I didn't want in here. And my initial thing in here was to um, create basically a contextually clone, have it bubble up people I needed to talk to based on frequency. You see this frequency column on the left. Uh, I really have four frequencies. I have um, client, which I don't think is in here, which I reach out to every month. Um, business every three months, WordPress every six months, casual every year, and NA is just people I need in here for other reasons, but I don't really want to bubble up for me. Um, and that's kind of where I started. It's either tagged <laughs> through all 4,500, either tagged them with one of those four or one of the five, or deleted them completely. And again, deleted quite a few of them um, as it went out. Then I created this events thing, which to be honest, I thought early on was probably going to be a waste of time, but it was worth a shot. But every time I have a, an event with someone, we had some folks over to talk about Notion. I was in a live after five at the North Georgia State Fair. I tag the people I see there, the, mostly from a business context. I don't do this for personal events, but any business events I go to, I tag the people I see there so it'll keep track of that um, in their profile. You know, just kind of link in the people and just kind of mention who is there. Um, yeah, and again, I thought this might be overkill, but the more I get into this, the more I like this because later when I'm pulling up a contact and say, who is this person again? I can see the events I was at with them. And I'm like, oh yeah, I met him at this thing and saw him there and went golfing with them or, you know, whatever the case was, you know, as time goes by. And so the beauty of this first thing I'd set up was I get this reach out now. I can just, it's just a filter. Um, the math is pretty complicated. I have some things in the Notion Facebook group that get into that a bit more, but basically it just says, hey, you last contacted them on such and such day, either because I typed that in or more likely it pulled from an event. And so you need to reach out to them on this day. And so these are ones that are on or before the day I'm recording this video that I should reach out to just because they're clients I haven't talked to recently or business people I need to reach out to. Just kind of a tickler to say, hey, you should talk to these folks again. You haven't in a while. So cool. So that's why I added contacts. It was great. Wasn't sure I was going to keep up with it enough, but as I keep adding more things, it's become pretty awesome. So I figured... Now that I have all these contacts in Notion, what else can I do? And so I have a thing, uh, we used to have a spreadsheet in Google Docs for our active clients. We have like 100 active clients um, just to keep track of, you know, what plan are they on, how many tweaks do they get each month, how much do they pay us each month, um, trying to figure out, you know, they're on different web hosts, different domains, uh, different billing systems of ours, you know, we're trying to get all that consolidated. So it was just kind of a mess. It was a spreadsheet with a separate list of contacts um, than my one. So I said, hey, if we combine these again, trying to get trying to get things to one single source of truth. So now I type in the name of the business and their website and then link their contact from my contact list, which automatically pulls in their email, automatically pulls in their phone. So again, if their phone number changes, we change it once, it will change it everywhere. In this case, uh, for the different projects we have, we have some contacts in here three or four times. And so again, I don't have to type their email and phone every time I type, do it one, link that record and it pulls from their main record does a good job. So that's kind of a neat little spreadsheet for us to have. We can quickly look, see our clients, see what plan they're on, see how many total clients we have, how much revenue they have, all that kind of stuff um, works well there. The next one uh, is the CRM, and I've talked about this one before. And this is essentially, there's a, a base template that works about like this. And I have different views for this. This one's uh, pretty robust, but just seeing all the leads coming in and stuff. 
Um, and again, I've tied it back to that primary contact so I can know who it was. And more importantly, when I pull up that contact and say, oh yeah, we had an opportunity with them three years ago we lost or it's one we opened or you know whatever the case was. Um, and with this, which is cool, is uh, I don't think we actually see it in this view, but there's a follow-up date. So again, I can just have that bubble up and tell me when I need to follow up with these folks based on you know this project that's coming up and what's going on, when the project might close, you know what the value is, what percent chance I think we have of winning, so therefore what the weighed value is. It's a pretty robust system. We have tons of different views in here, but again, pulling in that contact is pretty useful because then it can populate this with info from that contact record without me having to duplicate it and risk having two different versions of the record somewhere. And again, so if I go into that contact from somewhere else, I can see the relations to this and say, oh yeah, we had that, that lead with them uh, that went well or went poorly or whatever the case may be. A uh, new one I added is the spaced repetition. This is not pulling from my contacts, um, but just I had a video on this. I'll link that. There's a video and a template for this, trying to duplicate the Anki tiny cards super memo kind of thing where uh, just trying to memorize faces. You know, I can use it for other things too, but just to memorize who is who. Uh, so again, I have it pull from that same database. I have a couple columns in there for, I call them Anki things because Anki is the, the system I still use and probably will slowly wean myself off of. Um, but again, having it all in one place, is just making these records more rich. Um, in this case, the data from Anki isn't really helping. The fact that you know Elon Musk is a level two in my reminder system doesn't help much, but um, if it, I meet someone at an event, I, I put them in here, and so again, it's just one place to have it versus having all these records in here and having them all in Anki, and you know the numbers don't quite add up together. Getting them all in one place works well. And again, this, I have a separate video about how this works as long, along with a template you can use how to do that. Um, another thing we did, um, I was at a meetup, not, or actually it was at WordCamp Birmingham. Uh, someone mentioned, with your strategic partner list, and they went on to explain and said, you know, we don't really have one. Like, we have strategic partners we use, we call on a lot, you know, great folks we work with, but don't have a single list for it. So, as most things with Notion, it started with a blank page, just typed some names on it, and then formatted a bit more, and then made a little database, and then finally said, you know what, making a separate database for this is silly. I have a database of contacts, so I just made a new column in that contact database with some drop downs. I can tag what kind of reference they are for us, um, you know, what kind of partner they are. Are they design help, development help, a hosting company, IT folks we refer stuff to, pay-per-click, photography, social media, video. There's other ones that go further down this page. But here I have this one page say, who do we know that's great with photography? Let's pull this up and ah, there's those two. And of course, because it's a database and pulling just from the main contacts again, you can see it's the main contacts list. Uh, it's just filtered to only show those that have something in the strategic partner box. You know, we have I don't know, 30 that have something here out of a thousand. So there's a bunch that have a blank box, which is fine. Uh, that's the beauty of Notion and how this works. But if we need to see hey, who's good with photography, we can pull this up, see it. And of course, because the database, we can click on their name, get details of, oh, they shoot this, their average price is this. You know, we kind of keep notes on all these partners for who they work best with and what kind of price range we're looking at and what our markup might be and all that kind of stuff without having a separate database that again, the email address over there might not be the same one here. It all just pulls from that same source of data. Um, it's beautiful. And then what I added yesterday is we have a bunch of various spreadsheets floating on Google Drive that I've kind of consolidated for who we send holiday cards to every year. Um, so I pulled the last couple years worth. Uh, so in my contact list, I didn't have address in there. I thought that was kind of overkill, but now I have a need for it. So I put address in and we had, of course, the addresses in those old spreadsheets. So I copied those in as we had them for a lot of them and just added tags for what year do we send holiday cards to folks. So there's 2017, 2018. And they start adding 2019 to so those that will get another one this year or new folks we think of. So over the coming months, we can kind of say, oh, let's make sure we send so-and-so. You know, it's usually a, not a card. We usually send a small gift, a little gift basket or, you know, whatever uh, we decide to do. But this way we can have this ongoing list. And again, we used to have two and really more than that. We had four or five different spreadsheets. We'd say, copy the spreadsheet over each year, delete some people, add some people, update addresses, whatever the case is. It just becomes chaos. I mean, you guys know how this is in Google Drive. Things get real messy. <clears throat> so now it's all in one place. It's just a matter of tagging folks with what's going on. And then when it comes time to send the cars, I'll filter and say, only show me the 2019s. There's a full list of names and addresses and off we go. It works beautiful. So those are the main things I use it for. And again, I keep, now that I have all these pretty rich records, increasingly rich records in Notion, I'm finding more and more ways to use it. I'm sure I'll come up with more. Uh, for me right now, really getting the Anki stuff, the, the spaced repetition flashcard stuff built out will really help build this out because I have a lot of folks in there that are not in this list yet. So I'll slowly get those out. And then things like going to events, the fact that I tag people after events means I'll add more people from there too. Cause I'll go to an event, see, you know, 10 folks, great. 
eight of them already in here, so I'll kind of tag them to the event, but two are new people. So I'll spend a few minutes, figure out who they are, maybe add them on LinkedIn, add some notes, add their picture, you know, kind of spend some time and build a pretty rich record for them. Um, you know, put them in the Anki piece, I'll sort of see their face come up a couple times, remember their name next time I see them. It work really well for that kind of stuff. And then at the end of the day, you end up with cards that look about like this. You know, you have the little photo at the top. Um, I have it, have it where I have the, the small photo and the big photo is their face just to pull into different things. Name, the frequency, the Anki related stuff, the tags for how I know them. Are they a client? Do I know them at WordCamp? Whatever. What organization they're part of, their phone number, their email address, their mailing address. Is there a strategic partner that's tied in there? Uh, some of the formula stuff that pulls in when I should reach out to them again. Um, but I can see, are they related to a client job? Okay, so we won a job with them, we lost a job with them. We can see that kind of stuff here. We see events I saw them at, I can click on that and it'll show me the dates um, of the events I saw this person at so we can see what's going on. Um, holiday cards, like all kinds of great stuff when you pull up this one record, wherever you pull it from. So if we're in the holiday card list and someone else on my team pulls this up and says, who is this guy? And they pull up and say, oh yeah, okay, I meet up for campies with this company. Mickey saw him at this meetup and on the, oh, the WordCamp Atlanta call, of course, he's on the organizing committee. I know who that guy is now. Gotcha. You know, it's easy to, instead of just seeing a name and wondering the context behind it, having all these different systems built into one gives you incredible context behind every contact. So again, the one big downside is that we'll, this does not sync to my Google contacts and therefore doesn't sync to my phone. I have two separate lists there. But as you can see from this, I ultimately went from like seven different lists down to two, which is pretty good. And I think even when the API comes out, if there's a way to sync this with Google Contacts, I don't think I will, just because I think this is a smaller, it's still big, but a smaller list of very rich information. And I'll let my phone and Contacts Plus just hammer away at the thousands and thousands of just random phone numbers and email addresses so they pop up appropriately there. So I'll have some links with this video if you view it on notiontips.com uh, to some of the other stuff. But if you have questions wherever you see it, uh, leave a comment, let me know. I'll be happy to help out. Thanks.